In the annals of history, few figures emerge with the aura of mystique and power as Rollo, the Viking Jarl. Rollo's saga is one of legendary proportions, weaving together the adventurous spirit of the Vikings, the complexities of medieval politics, and the fierce will of a leader determined to carve his name into the annals of time. Rollo's story serves as a testament to the enduring allure of Viking lore, while also shedding light on the intricate interplay of power, culture, and destiny. Rollo's origins are shrouded in mystery, a characteristic common to many Viking leaders of his time. Believed to have been born in the late 9th century, Rollo hailed from the rugged landscapes of Scandinavia, where seafaring and raiding were a way of life. The Vikings with their longships and fearsome reputation struck terror into the hearts of coastal communities across Europe. There are some chronicles and Norse sagas that tell us about Rollo's ancestry. However, these sources are not to be fully trusted and may even be interpreted as folklore. The Icelandic sagas claim that Rollo was from Moor, a county in the northmostern part of Norway. The 12th century English historian William of Malmesbury stated that Rollo was born of a noble line among the Norwegians. However, Dodo of St. Quentin, a historian from the 10th century, was commissioned by Richard I of Normandy, Rollo's own grandson, to write a chronicle on the history of Normandy, which included Rollo's life and roots. This piece of work is also known as the Historia Normanorum. While Dodo likely had access to direct family members and other people with a living memory of Rollo, Dado's account could be the most reliable. Nevertheless, this fact must be weighed against the text's potential biases as an official biography. According to Dado, Rollo was a Dane from Dacia, which is Latin for the word Denmark and Sweden. According to Dado, Rollo was a man of unparalleled physical prowess and unyielding determination. He describes Rollo as a towering figure both in stature and presence, whose very aura struck fear into the hearts of his enemies. In his youth, he would go to war with the king of Dacia. Rollo's brother Gorim would fall in battle, and Rollo would despair and go into exile. He would then make his way to England with a band of men, and successfully raid in several kingdoms. According to Snorri Sturluson, Rollo would soon get a reputation for being a ferocious warrior, and he would earn the nickname the Walker, as no horse could withstand his tremendous weight, forcing him to walk everywhere. This conveys Rollo's immense size. It's possible that Rollo was one of the warriors in the great heathen army, as their time in England spanned from the years 865 to 878. In what year he joined is unknown, but Rollo is described as fighting in England in several different sources. It was during Rollo's time in England where he struck up a friendship with King Guthrum, otherwise known as King Ethelstan, as he was no longer a Viking, but a baptised Christian. Guthrum was accepted as the King of East Anglia. He was given the blessing of Alfred the Great after his conversion and after his defeat at the Battle of Eddington, where Alfred overcame Guthrum and the Great Heathen Army in a climactic conflict. If Rollo fought alongside Guthrum as a Jarl in the Great Heathen Army, it further explains their friendship. Rollo would soon look to Francia, a fragmented land due to the internal politics that had been going on in the kingdom for decades. This would make it ripe for sacking and conquering. The sworn pagan adversary, Charlemagne, held the throne as King of the Franks until the year 814. His rule was characterised by numerous conflicts against both political rivals and religious opponents. His frequent triumphs led to the swift territorial expansion, culminating in the year 800 
when the Pope declared him the restored Emperor of the Romans. However, this consolidated authority was short-lived. After the death of Charlemagne's son, Louis I, internal discord and civil strife threw the empire back into disarray. Louis I's three sons immediately vied for control, plunging the realm into a violent power struggle. After three years of a bloody deadlock, they eventually reached a peace agreement. The territory split into what later became known as West, Middle and East Francia. Nevertheless, Charlemagne left behind more than a potent legacy. He also accumulated a host of pagan adversaries, thirsting for revenge. Around the year 820, a pagan Viking fleet ventured up the river Seine to pillage along Frankish shores. It is believed that the initial wave of Viking raiders separated from a larger force in Britain upon hearing news of Charlemagne's demise. Motivated by a desire for vengeance and enticed by rumours of immense Frankish wealth, Viking warriors targeted defenceless monasteries and townsfolk. They plundered gold, committed murders, burnt crops and captured slaves. All the while the Frankish Empire crumbled from within. The coastal town of Rouen in particular bore the brunt of repeated Viking onslaughts, leaving it decimated in their wake. By the year 885, Rollo was a fierce battle-hardened Viking chief, with many warriors under his command. He decided to join Siegfried the Sea King in his invasion of Paris, seeing the land as weak due to constant political turmoil. The hostile Vikings began pillaging, sacking, and burning all towns, monasteries and churches on the way to their prize. With hundreds of ships and possibly tens of thousands of men, the Vikings arrived outside Paris in late November of the year 885 and demanded tribute. This was denied by Oddo, the Count of Paris, who was left in charge of the city Although the Count could only assemble several hundred soldiers to defend the city, the Vikings attacked with a variety of siege engines, but failed to break through the city walls, despite days of intense attacks. The siege was maintained for months, but without any significant assaults after the initial attack. As the siege continued, most of the Vikings left Paris to pillage further upriver. The Vikings made a final unsuccessful attempt to take the city during the summer. In October, Charles the Fat, the Emperor of the Carolingian Empire, arrived with his army. Charles encircled Rollo and his immense forces. However, Charles had no intention of fighting. He allowed the Vikings to sail up the River Seine. When the Vikings finally withdrew from France the following spring, Charles gave them 700 pounds of silver as promised. Emperor Charles' prestige in France was greatly diminished after this event, which would create a long-lasting power struggle. Dado states that Rollo would then make his way to northern France and overrun the land in a series of Viking raids. In one audacious raid, Rollo would carry off Popper Bayou and would marry her. She would give birth to Rollo's first son, now known to history as William Longsword. Popper was the daughter of Count Berengar, a dominant prince of the region that Rollo had conquered. Rollo had just taken the Rouen. With Francia facing much instability, it was left weak. After the siege of Paris in the year 885, Oddo, the Count of Paris, was chosen by the Western Frankish nobles to be their king, following the overthrow of Emperor Charles the Fat. Oddo was crowned in February in the year 888. By the year 898, Charles the Simple would be crowned the king of West Francia due to the death of Oddo. This period was a chaotic time and Rollo would take full advantage. He would extort provinces in northern France and amass much wealth. 
Viking warriors would flock to Rollo due to his growing reputation, and northern France would become a hub for Viking trade, being named Normandy, or the land of the Northmen. Rollo and his men would soon grow ever more hungry for power. Chart, a prominent city located in the heart of Frankish territory, became a focal point of Rollo's ambitions. Its strategic significance, coupled with its wealth and resources, made it an attractive target for the ambitious Viking lord. The city's fortifications were formidable, and its defenders were ready for a prolonged struggle. Rollo, however, proved to be a brilliant commander, employing a combination of siege engines, psychological warfare, and relentless assaults to wear down the enemy's defences. By the year 911, Rollo had launched his siege on the city, following a campaign of raiding across the north of Francia. The French army would soon arrive, and it was primarily led by Richard, the Duke of Burgundy, and Robert, the first of France. Richard attacked Rollo and his forces, and they met in battle. According to legend, the bishop brought out the Virgin's tunic, a holy relic supposedly worn by the Virgin Mary, which blinded the Norsemen and led to a French victory. The French successfully managed to encircle and capture the majority of the Norse army, but Rollo and a small company escaped. Due to Rollo's escape, the raids and occupation of the Rouen by the Norsemen would continue despite the loss. The French opened negotiations with Rollo to end the violence, which would lead to the Treaty of saint clair sur epte Charles the Simple understood that the Viking raids would not stop, and decided to negotiate a peace. When the treaty was signed, it granted Rollo and his Viking warriors land in the region that would eventually become known as Normandy. In return, Rollo agreed to end his raids and defend the territory against other Viking incursions. Rollo's establishment of Normandy marked a unique chapter in medieval history. He not only embraced the region as his new homeland, but also embarked on a path of integration with the local Frankish population. However, one of the conditions after Rollo lost the Battle of Chartres was to convert to Christianity. The Viking warlord and pagan would be baptised along with many of his men. As a token of Charles the Simple's goodwill, Rollo was to marry Gisela, his daughter. These events would mark the beginning of Normandy as a state. The historian Duddo narrates a humorous story, not repeated in other primary sources, about Rollo's pledge of fealty to Charles as part of the treaty. According to Duddo, the churchmen would urge Rollo to kiss the king's foot to prove his allegiance. Rollo refused, saying, I will never bow my knees at the knees of any man, and no man's foot will I kiss. Instead, Rollo commanded one of his warriors to kiss the king's foot. The warrior complied by raising the king's foot to his mouth, while the king remained standing, which caused the king to topple backward, much to the amusement of their entourage. During the ceremony, Rollo would also change his name to Robert. The oath Rollo had just made to the king would make him and his Viking warriors into the future nobility of Normandy. However, the Frankish throne was still not secure, and there was always turmoil within the kingdom. After the year 918, the aristocracy of West Francia began to show its disagreement with Charles's governance. The main reason was the increasing power of Hagano, a noble who was the king's favourite counsellor. Rollo, having sworn loyalty and support to Charles, assumed the vital task of safeguarding the northwestern coast of West Francia. This responsibility came alongside his duty to protect Charles, which he took seriously. 
In the year 920, Charles the Simple found himself in a dire situation when he was captured by Robert, the brother of Oddo, the king Charles had deposed earlier. Following a prolonged period of negotiations, Charles was reluctantly freed. He would soon face a direct challenge from Robert. In response, Charles retaliated, marshalling significant force that included Rollo and his Viking warriors. The pivotal moment arrived in the year 923, at the Battle of Soissons. Despite their success in slaying Robert during the battle, Charles the Simple's army suffered defeat. Charles was captured once more, while Rollo and his remaining forces withdrew to their coastal base camps. In the ensuing power struggle, Robert's son-in-law Rudolf, the Duke of Burgundy, seized the crown and took West Francia for himself. Rudolf, displaying political acumen, wisely refrained from starting his reign with Rollo as an adversary. In an effort to maintain peace, he made significant land concessions, yet the temporary harmony proved short-lived. King Rudolf lacked foresight and failed to grasp Rollo's political aspirations. By the year 925, Rollo and his Viking horde resumed their destructive path, leaving cities plundered and fields scorched in their wake. The precise year of Rollo's death remains a mystery. There are suggestions that he might have persisted in raids until as late as the year 932, or perished in the year 928, shortly after he violated agreements with King Rudolf. Regardless, Rollo was laid to rest in the Cathedral of Rouen. His burial, accompanied by complete Catholic rites. However, according to Adhemar de Chaban, a French monk, just before Rollo's death, Rollo would sacrifice many people to Odin, as well as giving gifts to the church. This reflects his Viking roots endured till the end. Rollo's legacy is enduring and multifaceted. As the founder of Normandy, he established a powerful dynasty that played a significant role in European affairs. His descendants, most notably William the Conqueror, would go on to shape the course of English history. The Norman conquest of England in 1066, led by William, a direct descendant of Rollo, transformed the English monarchy and left a profound impact on English culture and language. In summary, Rollo, the Viking warlord turned Norman nobleman, stands as a captivating historical figure. His legacy as the founder of Normandy and the architect of European dynasties underscores his enduring impact on the course of medieval history. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe and share, and I'll see you all soon for another History Profile.